Welcome to Wednesday's News Moto, brought to you by For Real. In this News on Two Wheels, you get to watch footage of a ride in Cambodia while I update you on the news of the week. Today's ride begins with a quick grocery stop, then continues through many areas of Siem Reap you'll probably recognise. We are back in Siem Reap after our trip to Thailand and Laos. Big thank you to Now and Lao for inviting us to tag along on this adventure. Also, many thanks to Yorma the Explorer and Kat for showing us around Bangkok. Links to both of those channels are in the description of this video, so please give them a look as they're both fantastic channels made by great people. We're actually in some of their recent videos. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook if you want to see what we're up to between videos. At For Real, we donate the money we earn from YouTube to charities in Cambodia. Here is the total we've donated so far. We are able to donate this money because people like you watch our videos, so thank you. In the description of this and every For Real video, you will find links to the charities we support. Check out their websites to find out more about what they do and donate directly if you want to. We regularly support Reach, Heartprint and Cambodian Children's Trust. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps. OK, now the formalities are out of the way, let's get into the news. It is Wednesday the 24th of January. In today's news, we break ground on another new airport, cool Thai tensions over a border temple, look at some rubbery figures, a massive drug bust, and see why the mother of a hit-and-run driver wants to sue his victims. We'll follow all of this up with a few good news stories. Another international airport for Cambodia? Ground has been broken on the first phase of construction of the Koh Rong International Ecotourism Airport. It's going to be Cambodia's first island airport and it will cost around $300 million. Phase 1 will be completed in five years, but I'm not sure if that means it will be operational in that time frame. Wouldn't it be great if there were direct flights from Siem Reap? Maybe by 2030. Thai MPs in Sisaket want the Thai Prime Minister to discuss access to the Pravihir Temple ruins during his upcoming meeting with his Cambodian counterpart. The temple sits pretty much on the border between Thailand and Cambodia, and its ownership has been hotly contested in the past. Access from the Thailand side has been blocked since 2008, when military activity was stepped up on both sides of the border. In 2011, military clashes over the site claimed 34 fatalities. Two years later, the International Court of Justice ruled that the land adjacent to the temple on the east and west belongs to Cambodia. An older ruling from 1962 said the south side of the temple was Cambodian territory and the north side was Thai. Provincial MPs are hoping the two leaders can agree on reopening tourism around the Pravihir Temple complex. There have been attempts to restore access to the culturally and historically significant site in recent months, and the issue has also drawn interest from the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. According to the Governor, the private sector also supported the move with a plan to lobby trade and commerce bodies to join the campaign for renewed tourism. Moving on to a trade item that will hopefully bounce back. Cambodia exported over 368,000 tonnes of dry rubber in 2023, which is a slight decrease of 1.3% compared to the previous year. The Kingdom made $490.6 million in revenue from rubber exports last year, which is also down about 7%. The report attributed the decrease in rubber exports to a rise in domestic demand from car tyre factories. In 2023, a tonne of dry rubber cost an average of $1,333, which is about $82 lower than the 2022 price. Southeast Asian countries export rubber mainly to Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore and China. Cambodia has over 400,000 hectares of rubber trees, with 79% of those old enough to be tapped. Now we have more crack than a plumber's convention. Military police in Pravihir province have cracked down on cross-border drug trafficking and seized more than one tonne of methamphetamine and an SUV from a group of suspected drug traffickers in a district near the Cambodia-Lao border. The deputy chief of the provincial anti-drug department in Pravihir province stated a group of suspected drug traffickers were transporting drugs in an SUV car across the border into the Chep district. While the group was driving the car inside Cambodia, they were spotted by the provincial military police officers who patrol the area. The military police chased the car, but before they could apprehend the group, the suspects abandoned the car near the forest behind the military police post and fled into the inky dark undergrowth. I'm sure if they had a uni mog, they would have been more successful in fleeing the scene.
The police inspected their vehicle and found more than 1,000 packages of methamphetamine with a combined weight just over one tonne. It seems that the suspects fled across the border into Laos where they remain at large. Now get your notebook ready because you're going to need it for this story. The mother of a 23-year-old man who was driving a Jeep which hit a man causing his death and then fled from the scene is now suing the victim's wife and three other relatives with public defamation. I think I need a whiteboard to visualise this mess. The Phnom Penh Municipal Court's deputy prosecutor summoned the victim's wife, her uncle and the victim's younger sisters for questioning. According to the summons, the relatives of the victim were being sued by the mother of the driver on three counts of public defamation, defamation through the media and public insult. According to the plaintiff's complaint, last year she and her husband travelled to meet the victim's family and paid $1,000 to them towards his funeral that their son caused. She claimed the victim's wife later wrote on Facebook, the parents had threatened the victim's family not to sue their son and also that if they did start proceedings against their son, they, the parents, would destroy the family's future. What the wife of the victim posted on social media was not true and the other relatives have continued to spread this falsehood which has badly insulted her family's reputation, leading to other people on social media insulting her family as well, she said. Wouldn't hitting someone with your car and then leaving them to die already badly damage your family's reputation? Hmm. The son of the woman suing the family was arrested by police after the hit and run and was sent to the court for legal action. The suspect has already been charged by the court with driving with carelessness, causing death and injuring other people with aggravating circumstances, and also with evasion. So sad they have to deal with a loss and also deal with all of this as well. Now moving on to some numbers that are dropping but are still too high. The number of road fatalities in Cambodia dropped to 1,590 in 2023, which is a decrease of 7% from 1,709 in 2022. Accidents and injuries rose up to 4,500 in 2023, and that's up 12% from 2022. 41% of the accidents were caused by speeding, 22% by failing to adhere to traffic rules, 9% by not respecting the right of way, 9% by careless turning, 7% by reckless overtaking, 12% was due to vehicle factors, driving under the influence of alcohol, and drowsy driving, among other things. The Deputy Prime Minister and Interior Minister said road traffic accidents killed at least four people and injured 12 every day in the Kingdom. 80% of the people killed were motorcyclists, and 73% of them were not wearing a helmet. So please wear a helmet, it's something so simple and it may well save your life. Now we've got some good news. The Apsara National Authority has constructed a bicycle bridge alongside the Takeo Temple Bridge to facilitate cycling in the archaeological park. Bicycle paths within Angkor Archaeological Park now span over 23 kilometres in total, including four bridges. The primary goal of establishing bicycle routes in Angkor is to separate road traffic from bicycle paths, promote cycling and reduce accidents on the road, particularly between motorists and cyclists. Additionally, this initiative aims to minimise vehicle exhaust that could negatively impact the temples. We are hoping to test some electric bikes soon to see how they go exploring the temple, so look out for that coming up. Something we also want to experience and a story we've been following for ages, the graphic novel The Golden Voice, which immortalises the real life and music of famous Cambodian songstress Ross Sere Satia, is being transformed into a musical performance for the theatre. The show will debut in Phnom Penh this year and is being produced by the Khmer Art Action Group. The president of Khmer Art Action said the musical will debut in May this year. Hopefully we'll be able to get down and see it when it comes out. If you'd like to purchase a copy of The Golden Voice, it's available at Monument Books in Phnom Penh and also online if you are elsewhere. There is a saying in Cambodia that music is the soul of a nation. Until now, no one embodied that spirit more than Ross Sere Satia, The Golden Voice. Fast forward about 50 years and the hottest thing in Cambodian music is rapper Van Dar. He has just released a new single called Six Years in the Game, featuring fellow singer Arwich. He switches between English and Khmer, often mid-sentence, and is breaking new ground with his music all the time. Check it out. Before we finish up today, I want to mention the 2024 Angkor Pause Day that is coming up on the afternoon of the 25th of February. It will be held at the Clubhouse on Bamboo Street. All of the animal-related charities, businesses and services in Siem Reap will be there, so it's a great opportunity to support them and also meet some new people.
There will be food, drinks, and because it's organised by our good friend Ange, aka DJ Pinkbits, there will be great music as well. Check out our Facebook page for the event link. That brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all of the most important events in the kingdom. Don't forget to join us on Instagram or Facebook if you'd like to stay up to date with what we're doing in real time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon. Mm-hmm.